bit by bit, I'm going to show images of leptomeningeal involvement in two granulomatous diseases. Basal leptomeningeal enhancement is the most sensitive radiological finding in tuberculosis, but not the most common. And also in sarcoidosis, there's the formation of granulomas with multi-system involvement. Sarcoidosis can involve the dura, the leptomeninges, or the parenchyma. And if it involves the leptomeninges, which is the case in about 40% of patients, there is often a basal leptomeningeal involvement with enhancement along the basal cisterns and between the cerebellar foliae. Because there is involvement of the basal leptomeninges, you can also see thickening of the pituitary stalk and of the optic nerve, which might be mistaken for meningioma. The basal leptomeningeal enhancement can extend along the perivascular spaces, giving this very typical pattern at the level of the centrum semiovale. And if you've seen the website, you might have read that along the lenticostriatal arteries, there's a double sheet of leptomeninges and an extension of the perivascular space in contrast to the cortical arteries. And the leptomeningeal involvement in sarcoidosis can extend along these perivascular spaces, as you can also see in this patient. And the parenchymal lesion in this patient is orientated along the perivascular space. Parenchymal lesions in sarcoidosis can have low T2 signal, which is helpful but not specific because you can also see it in lymphoma and in cellular metastasis. The parenchymal lesions can also be orientated perivenular in a pattern resembling a demyelinating disease like multiple, multiple sclerosis. Tuberculous meningitis, which occurs in, among others, HIV patients, which have an increased risk of extrapulmonary TBC, gives also a basal meningitis with extensive enhancement of, along the basal cisterns and in the infratentorial compartment and sometimes you can also see a tuberculoma. The spread of TBC to the brain is by a bacteremia and the bacilla hide in the highly oxygenated brain and when the TBC hides it's called a rich focus and what happens in tuberculous meningitis is that a rich focus in the cortex or the meninges ruptures into the subarachnoid space and then leads to the meningitis. And there was a very nice case report in 2020 in neurology. And this is a 40-year-old woman who presented with meningitis on this MRI scan. And she had had an MRI scan three years before, after a concussion, so without signs of meningitis. And she was known with latent tuberculosis three years before that. She had had it as a child. And on the scan three years before, there was nodular enhancement of the leptomeninges, which in retrospect must have been a rich focus that led to the meningitis three years later at the time of this scan. Tuberculosis is not the most common opportunistic brain infection, that is toxoplasmosis, and we're going to have a look at that next time. Thanks for watching.